I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Daisha Harwood, and Daisha is Executive Director of Santa Barbara Historical Museum. Welcome, Daisha. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're on the show. Every time I go into the Historical Museum, I'm always impressed whether I'm just touring around or where I'm go whether I'm going to an event there and you're, you have a special display. Um, it's just wonderful. And we are so lucky to have you in our community. Thank you. So maybe you can tell us about your exhibits and your programs and the things going on at the Historical Museum these days. Sure, so the, mu the museum is always hosting different exhibitions, different collaborative programming and all sorts of fun things. Uh, right now, we're actually gonna be hosting this spring an exhibition about the history of the last 50 years of Santa Barbara summer solstice celebration, really? which should be fun. And um, so we're looking forward to that. And then we're also hosting an exhibition about the centennial of Old Spanish Days, Fiesta. Mm. So the solstice, how many years for, did you say? 50. 50 for solstice? 50 for solstice, yes. That's quite a historical perspective. It is, so we'll be drawing from the museum's um, extensive archive of photos and newspaper articles and all sorts of incredible materials. Um, and of course, uh, local, uh, photog or local photographs um, from people like Nell Campbell, mm -hmm. who's quite um, a, an inspiring person in our community with her history of photography. So anyway, it should be a lot of fun. That will be fun. And in the centennial. Yes, we're working on the centennial um, of Old Spanish Days and celebrating their history. That's been a big project for us because we've been collecting the, the posters from every year oh. that Fiesta happened, which is almost 100 years. It's 100 years ago, but of course, there were a few years where Fiesta couldn't happen, such as during the war. But oh. anyway, we've been on a mission to collect every last poster, pin, program, incredible photos, footage. We actually have um, video footage from the, the 1924 and the 1926 uh, parades uh, when Gosh. they were going down State Street. So it's just an incredible collection and really we're so grateful to all of the people who've contributed to it, especially this year as we've been preparing for the centennial to really make sure that we have every you know, last bit of history in our collection because that's what we're there for is to preserve it. Yeah, and then you have to store all that stuff, we do. right? And we then do. probably find a place to put it, and then you have to go through it and figure out what you're going to put out for the exhibition and what you need to. I imagine you have a lot of things that you save just because you want to have it. We do, absolutely. The museum has an incredible archive. Um, part of our Gledhill Library's mission is definitely to, you know, collect and organize, um, you know, for local researchers. And but certainly the museum's own team uses those resources frequently when we're preparing for exhibitions. The museum actually has a very large underground vault area. It's about three thousand square feet below the museum itself, and that's where oh. our Art, artifacts, archives, etc., are all stored in a safe and climate-controlled environment. Oh, that is fascinating. I don't know that I knew that. Maybe I heard that someday, but but 3,000 square feet mm -hmm. underneath, underneath. Mm -hmm. and it's climate controlled. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Yeah, it was a big project for us several years ago to actually add compact storage to really safely store those those objects, but also the climate control, which is a climate control and dehumidification here in Santa Barbara is a big thing, being so close to the beach as we are privileged to be. Oh, golly, yeah. Yes. And so you have people on your staff, I'm sure, I'm, I don't know what their mm -hmm. the title would be, but who are experts in all of this historical Absolutely, yes, we have registrars, material. curators, archivists, and really my team, which is small but mighty, all work together in preparing for something like a large exhibition um, in the case that we're doing right now. So, And so I bet, or maybe I'll ask you, um, do you use volunteers, I would imagine. Absolutely, volunteers help us with all sorts of programming. Um, we host a lot of lectures. We have um, volunteers in our library that help um, that help with research of you know people that are coming through looking for stories about their property or their family history oh. or any sort of anything that they're interested in. Um, we actually we assist a lot of um, a lot of columnists and um, writers in Santa Barbara that are writing about you know very relevant stories in Santa Barbara um, that are going on right now. And so we certainly our volunteers help with that as well. 
Um, but yeah, event hosts and on all sorts of things. It's it's a really it's a really fun place to work, but it's a really fun place to volunteer as well. Yeah. So. I, w I would imagine you get folks that are interested in genealogy too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, and we work very closely with the Santa Barbara Genealogical Society um, on on a lot of that research as well, which is great. We have a actually have a collaborative program with with them where we share the the many 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 obituaries in our collection which is one of the main things that, that people are oh. looking for but absolutely it's very fulfilling to see someone researching their family history and be able to come to the museum look through the newspaper articles and um, you know all sorts of things and sometimes land on a photo of someone from their family it's really extraordinary to see those personal connections wow which is what so, it's about um, the volunteer aspect, if someone is watching this or listening to this and um, they think, oh, I'm really interested in that, I'd like to be a volunteer, but um, what if I don't know enough? Do you train people? Absolutely. For their okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and we have a, a wide range of volunteers, you know, from the re retired school teacher to retired librarians to just people who just want to come and help us at events and uh -huh. maybe, you know, just um, do greeting or checking in and that kind of thing. We're very, very, very busy welcoming guests through events and our own programming frequently at the museum. So volunteers are always welcome and they should just reach out to the museum and let us know they're interested in helping out. Good. And so they could go on your website and find Absolutely. out how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or give us a call. We have, we have internship programs as well. We work with a lot of local college students. So yeah, definitely always reach out to the museum if you're interested in getting more involved. And then you have regular hours, of course. We do, we do. We're open Wednesday through Sunday mm -hmm. and every day from 12 to five, except for Thursdays, we stay open until seven, which is fun. It's just a nice opportunity to pop by the museum before you're heading out to dinner or a girl's night out, for example. We just hosted a little bit ago in an exhibition of ladies evening wear from our collection. We have an incredible collection of roughly 6,000 pieces in our, in, our, in, our, in our vault below the museum. And so we had all sorts of you know fun girls nights coming through the museum to see these incredibly <laughs> beautiful um, clothing items from you know the last hundred years of Santa Barbara history. Golly, that would be fun. Well, and you also don't you um, host First Thursday? We do, yeah. Almost every always every First Thursday we host, and usually there's music and wine being poured. It's such a fun night to be out in Santa Barbara. You yeah, know, yeah. We're also this year hosting the live live art and wine tour with the downtown organization. Just one of many collaborative collaborative events that the museum hosts. That's great. Yeah, you, you. folks are great collaborators. Thank you. So. Um, yeah, tell us some about some of your collaborations. Sure, so a couple recent collaborations would include the um, Old Mission Archive Library, the Santa Barbara Mission Archive Library, I should say. We did an exhibition of, of artwork that, that celebrated all of the missions of California mm -hmm. um, uh, in collaboration with them. We showed both their oils collection and our watercolor collection. It was the first time um, that they'd ever been shown together, which was extraordinary. Right now we're, we're collaborating with Summer Solstice, of course. We collaborate quite a lot with Old Spanish Days. We collaborated with the Bella Squardo Foundation to show um, artwork by Uget Clark. Um, but yeah, every year you'll see us collaborating with multiple institutions um, just to, you know, just to really kind of um, round out the story of Santa Barbara history. And in our case, just to stay as relevant as humanly possible. Gosh, Lots of fun. That is wonderful. Yeah. So now can a person who might be um, interested in a specific part of Santa Barbara history or their family history or whatever, what, what do they do? Do they have to call and make an appointment? Do they just show up? So they don't have to call and make an appointment, but we always recommend that they do because it gives our team in the library a little bit of, a little bit of heads up to do a little bit of their own research and see how we can really personally assist them. And um, it just makes it all the more fun for them to be able to come in and say, oh wow, you know, you already know, you've already looked for this or you've already, you know, you've already taken a look in our photo files and that kind of thing. But a huge part of what we do is education. So we're also really educating the researchers that come in, of all ages by the way, um, in the stories that they're looking for. So um, it's a good idea to make an appointment, but it's not necessary. Okay. And you also work with schools, right? Absolutely. We welcome schools 
many days of the week, including right now. I, I think we have about 60 kids there at this very moment. Oh, golly. Yeah, and they get to, you know, they get to, of course, visit our exhibitions, but we do activities with them oh. related to the, you know, that whatever works in with the curriculum um, that they're currently studying. You know, the, the older, older elementary students, a lot of the time will spend time with the archival materials in the Gladhill Library. Younger students will focus more on the stories of their ancestors. So anyway, yeah, absolutely. We, we, hold, we, we host quite a lot of kids and summer camps as well. We oh. don't host summer camp, but we have a lot of summer camps that bring their kids over and it's one of the activities that, that they do is to come to the museum. That's great. So summer's interesting. Yeah, and we are we're we're one of a handful of museums in Santa Barbara that don't charge anything for admission um, of any age, but per particularly school groups we don't charge for. And a lot of the time, we even help with their transportation to get them to our museum, really? which we're very proud of. Yeah, we just feel as though history should be as accessible as possible, and so we never want the ability to pay to interfere with someone's desire to learn more about our community. So how do you help with transportation? Great question. So we actually have a fund that is specifically for buses to get the, to get the class to the, to the museum. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. So if a uh, teacher mm -hmm. um, or even a parent is watching mm -hmm. this, listening to this, and, um, and they, th oh, I wonder if my school could come, my son or my daughter's school could come, um, wh what would they do? Would they call you? Would they just talk to their... Yeah, they would talk to my, they would talk to my education manager and she would guide them through the process of, of securing a bus and getting their students over to the museum. So most schools these days are very limited on their field trip budgets and mm -hmm. we don't ever want that to be something that would, you know, that would, right. that would impact their ability to visit. So we're just really fortunate that we've had a lot of really incredible donors that feel as though that is just a barrier that they want to see eliminated. That's great. And um, I love it that you tailor what you're going to present to the curriculum in the classroom. Absolutely. I mean, that's just the, I mean, we're, we're, we're really seeking to create, you know, future um, lovers of history, people who are continuously curious about the community that they live in, right? And so we're just very committed to that idea that the more that you know about Santa Barbara, the more you're going to care about it and the more you're going to be a great citizen. That's great. Continuous curiosity exactly. about your community. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the museum is you know, really fortunate to have a beautiful facility, but it's also very, you know, um, it's also just a very engaging place to continuously mm -hmm. come and enjoy. I mean, yeah. just this week we're hosting a talk about the history of the libero theater and um, a flamenco show we we host so many nonprofit events on mm. site and we're just really we just want to be the the most involved as we can in our own community so we're fortunate to be able to do that it's it was fun i had um uh, this talk about the libero the other night and one of our guests stood up at the end and she said I just want you to know that you just made it so much more meaningful for me next time I see a show um, at the libero it's just gonna have so much more so much more depth oh, and I love that you know we're so fortunate to work with these incredible historians um, who just really bring history to life to our visitors every day so anyway I'm grateful to all of them Bringing history to life, that's what you do, Absolutely. really. The times that I have been in there, I am surprised how you bring history to life. Thank you, yeah. thank you. And you have a, you have a museum store. We do. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that. Sure, so you can come in and find local, you know, local history books, but we also have books about hiking and all sorts of fun, um, you know, kind of tourist memorabilia related to Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, we carry old Spanish fiesta posters. We carry solstice posters. I mean, anything that you can think of related to the fact that we all love Santa Barbara, you'll probably find in our store. And you can also shop online as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so a person could uh, go Absolutely. online and access Absolutely. your store. Absolutely. We try to put as much of our as much of the museum content online as we can. You can shop online, you can search for research materials online. We do have micro exhibitions online so that the many people who want to remain connected to the museum can do that even when they move out of the area. And in fact, when you come to a talk at the museum, you'll see that TVSB is often here often there filming. All of our talks are also broadcast on TVSB. <laughs> That's great. 
That is that so, talk about collaborations. That is a absolutely. perfect one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Well, again, we just want to make it as accessible as possible. We love having people there, but if they can't come, then hopefully they're gonna, you know, they're gonna they're gonna zoom in our next talk or they're gonna watch uh, the recording of it in person in person yeah. later. So. And you have a wonderful library. Tell us about that. We do. We do. We have the Gledhill Library. It's a research library. It has as it has so many incredible materials. We have. Uh, at least a hundred years of Santa Barbara News Press history, mm. many other periodicals. Um, it has footage um, of many local festivals, home movies, you name it. Um, we've got oral histories, at least an, at least a thousand oral histories that have been collected over the years, and in fact by other by other organizations as well, just telling the stories of the many people that have been in Santa Barbara. So anyway, um, hundreds of thousands of photos. It's just an absolutely incredible collection. So I always encourage anyone who's curious about their property, their family, or anything else really related to Santa Barbara to come in. I'm always amazed when I get to walk through the library and see some of the see some of the the items that our researchers are taking a look at. You know, historic maps and oh. old programs, and you know, the the theater histories here in Santa Barbara. I mean, you name it. So wow. it's an extraordinary resource. And so, once again, a person can find out when the library is open by going to your website. Yes, absolutely. And uh, while they're there on your website, mm -hmm. they can hit that Donate Now button, I bet, because you're a 501c3 and they can make a tax-deductible donation. That's correct, and we are so appreciative of the many people that do that every year. We have an extraordinary um, group of members that continuously support the museum. And of course, philanthropy is incredibly important for the museum. It's really is how we all operate, isn't it? Yes, yes. And so tell us about your hopes for the news press area building. Sure, sure. So the museum is currently embarking to acquire the physical archive from the Santa Barbara News Press building. Over the years, the museum has acquired quite a lot of materials related to the news press. As I mentioned, we have at least 100 years in bound editions um, from the whole history of the paper um, going through about the 1980s, along with wonderful image files. People like Beverly Jackson, um, who was a you know wonderful columnist here in Santa Barbara, actually donated her, um, her entire photo collection and article collection to the museum, which we've exhibited. Um, so we just have we have an enormous amount of materials already that are constantly utilized by our researchers. So we are looking to acquire the remaining materials in the building, which I hope we'll be able to do. And we're, do, we're looking to do, do that right now with the help of incredible donors around this community that just feel as though it's really important and it should be saved. That is important. Oh, I'm so glad you have a team of people working on that. And so the, the materials that are inside of the building mm -hmm. itself or what yes, you're talking about. That's what we're talking about. So the old photo morgue, um, the previous, the microfilm that has yet to be digitized, um, the papers, um, you name it. We're, we're looking to acquire all those materials. You know, the news press has an extraordinary history of its own in Santa Barbara. Sure. But if you think about any local paper and what they've documented over the years, I mean, the museum collects a do over a dozen local papers and has for since we were since we were since we began in 1932. So um, the Stork family was actually very involved in the museum and in the creation of the museum, the physical yeah. museum, in the early 1960s. So anyway, we're looking to round out that collection or with the acquisition of the the materials in there. So fingers crossed that we'll be able to do that. But I think with some help from the incredible uh, local community that we have will be able to do that because it's just an it's an extraordinary piece of history. That is just amazing. Well, and what and else would they do with those things? Absolutely, and we're just, as I mentioned, we're all about access. I mean, you can walk into the museum five days a week and take a look at those materials on the spot. You don't have to wait for, you know, wait for a librarian to go to a separate facility and bring everything yeah, back. Yeah. And so we're just, we're, we're all about access and we're looking forward to hopefully preserving those materials for the next hundreds of years. Well, oh my gosh, Daisha, what, what a wonderful story you have. And uh, I hope that our listeners are encouraged to make a trip over to the museum and uh, go on your website, make a donation, find out how to be a volunteer. What about collaborations? Maybe they think of somebody that you might want to work with. 
Yeah, what great opportunities you bring for everyone in our community. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're so lucky. We have this incredible team over there. We have a super dedicated board and just an incredible oh. staff. And you know, the museum is just a. Um, we just really, we really just aim to be like that shining light in the yes. downtown community, but for all of Santa Barbara. So thank you for allowing us to illuminate that today. Yes, and thanks for sharing your wonderful story. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.